Amy. Hey, thanks a lot, Emily. Um, glad you are here with us today. We thought it would be a great idea to talk to some of the people who are, are using the product and how they have seen it uh, uh, be beneficial to their students and some best practices, ways that they're using it that might be helpful to you as you go into this world. So excited today to um, bring about uh, some new learning and some new ideas from different teachers uh, in the field. So just a little overview for us before we um, get started here. Uh, and and um, kind of go go deeper in into this world uh, with both Mike uh, Michael and Tim. Um, uh, um, one of the things that we want to remind you is that we are really looking at how do we help create that next generation welder. And so we bring a lot of different products into this world from our welding simulators, our um, live real welding guidance systems, our weld defect kits, our common welding kits, and our destructive uh, bend testers as well. So we see it as all part of the program to be able to bring into your classroom and um, help. So we want to jump right into some best practices for any classroom. And again, just to reintroduce, we have Tim Larson today, um, coming from the agriculture side, agriculture technology instructor and FFA advisor, and kind of um, how he has used it and seen it in his classroom. And then Michael, who is a manufacturing instructor and coming from that uh, kind of the manufacturing and the, and the trade side there as well. So we will also uh, be talking a little later um, uh, about a mobile lab and how that is used. So we'll get into some of our questions from our panelists right away. So I'm going to throw this out to uh, both gentlemen here. Um, if you would just introduce yourself and give us just a little bit about um, how long you've been a instructor in education in CT um, in welding or in agriculture. So I don't know who would want to go first, but uh, We'll okay, let I'll one go. of them speak up. All right, there we I'll, go. I'll go first. This is this is Michael. I go by Mike there, James. Here. Okay, Mike. Uh, perfect. Yep. That's fine. And uh, I, I was I was hired as a manufacturing instructor and also a welding instructor. I did the the manufacturing for a few years, and now we've had to switch to where I'm. The only thing I'm teaching now is welding, and and so the uh, when I first started teaching welding, I, uh, you know, you know how expensive material is and how difficult it is to really get students to understand the, the practice of welding and the hand-eye coordination down. So our, our CTE director, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Boltonhouse, had bought, had asked me if I would be interested in, in trying the simulator from a classroom, and I was very interested in it, and so it came, I hooked it up, and I got a lot of assistance. Anytime I needed any assistance from, from the uh, from the crew at the uh, God will place. They helped me out a lot, and we got the, the, the uh, simulator working. And it's really, it's really a good thing for my class because uh, I can sit in the classroom in a clean environment where where there's limited amount of noise, and I can explain to the students how to how to start up the weld. And then when the uh, when you turn it on and and get everything ready, it's, it has a simulator of a guy putting on his gloves and and it's pulling his mask down and starting the weld. And then you know it really it emphasizes how to, how you should tack well the two pieces together, and it, it it explains. But the but the best part about it for me is it's very hard to get the students to to know how to uh, to do the travel speed and the uh, the 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 angle and the you know the angles for the for, for the uh, as far as holding the, holding the big gun and the stick, you know, and and it has a guide for the the speed, the the angles, and the uh, the nozzle to plate distance, and you know it, it helps them to uh, get that kind of figured out before I take them into the to the lab and, and show them how to use the weld, and then when you show them how how to use the weld, when we're back in the the actual shop and they're welding, then I can refer them back to okay when you was in the simulator, remember it showed you hmm. have a little bit of an error when you were holding the weld gun like this so you know revert back to the uh, what we talked about using the simulator so i find it a very effective training tool it's 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 cost effective once you you know once you have it and you consider the price of metal and gas and and electrodes and all that kind of stuff so it's been a great help for air school thank you very much yeah thanks mike uh tim are you able to just kind of give us an introduction to yourself how long you've been in an instructor We might be having some technical difficulties with Tim's mic, Jamie. Okay. 
Okay, then we're going to just go ahead and keep on going. And um, uh, Mike, looks like it's me and you for right now. And, and that's great. I'll, I'll ask you a few more questions here. Um, and sure. you kind of uh, expounded on this a little bit. Um, but uh, can you tell me your welding program? How many students do you have in that in that your welding program right now? Uh, well, I'm I'm also the CDC, so I only have two classes. I have a okay. welding one class first block, and I have 25 students in that one. And I have okay. welding two class, and I, I I have six in that class. Okay, so you're kind of more introductory. You have a bigger class, and then they go to the next one, and it kind of uh, uh, whittles down a little bit in that sense. It sounds like. Well, it, it's more the fact that uh, I think the ones that that are that could be taking the two class right now are focusing this semester on their core classes. So, okay, yeah. gotcha. So with that, um, is it a kind of an introductory type class you know, that your your group of 25 students, they start out, what is that student like? Do they come in, do they have some welding background? Is it someone who has never welded before or is it kind of a mix of all that? Well, it's it's pretty much a background of no uh, okay. experience whatsoever. And, and uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the school I'm at, it's, it's a, a title one school so you know we, we have the students that really could benefit from learning a, a good trade and yep. uh, they uh you know i think my teaching them how to how to weld and how to read a tape measure is is a is a the first thing i focus on and okay. uh so they 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 really want they they want to learn how to do this and it, it's a uh, i don't think not not very many of them has have used uh you know hand tools or power tools or anything like that so you know it's it's a it's a pro process and and i just my class just started monday so okay. i've got the brand new ones in and that's, that's the first thing we've been working on right now is is uh we we work on how to read the tape measure and how to start welding so while okay. i'm teaching i have them each get up one at a time and go try the uh, simulator and and yeah and that time well, and we find that a lot of times too, that's great information, Mike, uh, because we find that a lot as well as kind of that introductory, no matter if it's that first uh, year class or they've been there for three or four years and they're they're more of that expert welder, um, but kind of getting them back into, you know, the the rust of the summer or the, the new semester and the, they haven't been doing it for a while, getting them back in, um, simulator can kind of uh, be helpful in that. In what ways did simu welding simulation kind of, where did that pique your interest to to try welding simulation for you um, as an instructor? Well, the, uh, we went to a trade fair a few years back and at the trade fair, one of the community colleges had a VR weld guide system set up at the fair and my students tried that and I saw how the first thing about it was was the, they they automatically turn it into a competition. So each one of them said, "I'm going to weld better than you." So they would get their score up, <laughs> and you know you could hear them all like like if they had made a better score, they would be bragging, and if they made a bad score, they say, they say "Okay, let me try it again." I, I something didn't go right that time. So it makes them really focus uh, on on the on the welding, and it, it turns it into a competition. I've noticed that even back in the in the weld shop. You know, I'm I'm also a coach. I'm a I'm a track coach and a cross country okay. coach, and I've noticed that if you can get them to to make it into a competition, it, it, it seems to help. And that that welding simulator, that's what really turned made me yeah. see that it would be such a benefit was the fact that the kids use that to uh, to uh, see who can you know kind of how good I can do and if I can do it better than you. And and it makes yeah. it better when they have the competition. It makes them better welders. You know, that's great that you say that because we see that all the time where when we're in schools or we get uh, different talk, talking with different instructors, that same thing, that competition mode where in the welding simulator, you get a score. And so you can then kind of say, you know, is my work angle, travel angle, all those things, are they correct? Am I doing it right? And when that score pops up, it does, it kind of brings the the competitive juices flowing, no matter if it's that that student who's really interested in welding or someone who's first trying it of, okay, how do I get better? And the funny part is students don't always realize that that's what's actually making them become a better welder is that competitiveness trying to get better and their skill gets better because of it, it seems like. I agree with you on that. Yeah. So 
kind of that's a great uh, uh, um, segue into the sex questions is, you know, kind of in that sense of what has helped your students grow in welding knowledge and skill um, with the welding simulators. And you kind of talked about that competition. Um, is there anything else that you can think of that uh, connects a welding simulator? And kind of like what you said is you went into the, the classroom um, and did the welding simulator, then you'd be out in the shop and you'd remind them what they were doing in the simulator. How would, have you seen that work with students? Uh, now, okay, so MIG welding and TIG welding is, is what we focus on here. Now, the TIG okay. welding is is very, for me, it's very tough to get the students to uh, kind of figure out how to get that that uh, stick welder started, you know. And so the uh, the connection is is when when I when I get them back in the in the in the in the lab for the stick welding and they have a hard time striking the arc. You know, then I can tell them, okay, so so remember when you were in the simulator, how how when you were in that simulator and you take that stick welder and sometimes it would like freeze on the screen and yeah, and uh, and I would tell you how to go ahead and I said there's different ways you can try to start it. You can try to start it like a, like you're striking a match, you can tap it, you can do other things, but you've got to focus on the fact that you can't leave that the that electrode close enough to the to the metal to to uh to where it, it sticks so it just it just lets them kind of reflect on what they learned in the classroom and it's it makes it easier in, in that environment because in the environment back in the back where we well in the shop there's a lot of noise going on a lot of yep. sparks flying a lot of action going on and so the simulator just lets them kind of focus on it. And, and they they think of the the simulator more i try to teach them it's more like a video game because all of them are very interested in video games yeah and that that's a great kind of way to talk about that next the next question here is you know how have you seen your students taken to while well, they And that's what I've heard too. Is we have we have students talking a lot about you know oh it's awesome because it has that video game type feel, but then they can apply it to again the real world, going out and do real welding. And so they do seem to really like that uh, side of of it where um, they get to to kind of uh, trial and error before they go and do the the real thing. So that can save on materials and and costs in that way in that world. Yeah, and, and yeah, and and it does have on one of the screens. It does tell you how much by by what they've done on the on the simulator, how much it has saved you. And it's you know it, that that that's a true statement. It, it saves you a lot of money on 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 a metal. Metal has in the last few years just it's uh, unbelievable how 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 much it's has gone up. I mean, it's more than tripled in some of the things. And yeah. uh, so with a uh, with a. Uh, with that being said, there it's it does save money in that sense, but but the, it's just the fact that uh, you know it cuts down on the amount of time that you have to you know you know the, the it's a very it's a it's a cost savings for us, and it also it, it also just it, it gives you a little bit of a closer bond to the students when you can you know get them in the classroom and just get, gather around the simulator and just kind of you know. Yeah, and it kind of draws everybody's you know everybody gets around it's like a like a circle thing it, it reminds me a lot of yeah. coaching the simulator does because huh. you're able to just to have like a like a like a you know a, a meeting you know meeting of the minds with them when you're around the simulator yeah and that's that's kind of the thing that i've also seen um and i'm kind of going to share a little bit of that where we've talked to, to education said the nice thing too is it's a teaching tool in some cases like that where you can get your students all around it, show them kind of the right technique or maybe what you're seeing wrong uh, being done incorrectly in the welding booth and they can see it without the helmets on, without all the noise. Right. You can talk through it. You know, some of that success too is then the students can kind of, um, you know, show each other and teach each other of what they need to be doing. And, and then that helps you as an educator at times too, where, Hey, they're, they're getting it because I had to do it one time. Now they're working together to do it, you know, multiple times right. after that fact. So it may give you some time back too. Yeah. And, and, and like, like what you said, they, they, uh, as far as that's one of the big, big things uh, when you said that it, it kind of made me think about it when, uh, when they're back there, they will start trying to help the other students weld. And so they, they will, you know, they'll talk about, okay, you need to do this and you need to do this a little bit. And, and then they'll refer back to stuff that I taught them. So it, it kind of reinforces what I've taught them because then they'll start telling them students the same thing I taught them. So, so it shows me that what I taught them worked with them and they're passing it on to the other students for them, for them to get that, you know, that same feedback and knowledge and stuff like that. So it just, it just makes for like a teamwork type of environment. Yeah. Yep. Well, that kind of leads in the next question. 
from your students, you know, how have you seen your students' skill level increase or, or gotten better from from virtual uh, learning in that in that sense? You know, I think of it more like the, the way you teach students how to weld is by hands on, and yeah. you can't. Uh, they, you, you know, I, I, when I when I was taking welding in college, it was like you know you go to, into a welding booth and you're sitting there by yourself and you sit there for a while and just work on something and, and it gets kind of boring. You know, it gets kind of boring when you're just sitting there welding by yourself and you know practicing. You know, you're not really making anything. But but with the uh, with the uh, simulator, uh, the the students can can take the knowledge they learned from the simulator and take it to the back. But what I, what I've noticed about it is it makes them like they think, okay, now I have found something that I can, okay, so now I have a, a destination in, in, for, for the end of my, uh, when I get out of high school, I really wasn't wanting to go to college, but the only kind of work I can find is working in the fast food industry. So I can now take this new knowledge that I've learned and apply it to a job. And they, they've been able to go right from high school and get a manufacturing job or or maybe not in welding all the time, but still get into the manufacturing where they can be a machine operator or a, uh, you know, or a welder, or maybe go to, uh, you know, any type of manufacturing job because they learn how not only to weld, but they do learn how to work in the shop environment and they, mm -hmm. they uh, kind of get the ability to use tools, read tape measures and things like that. And, you know, and the, the shops that I visited, you know, they, they, they usually tell me, you know, if they can learn how to read a tape measure and learn how to use the whale, they can take that knowledge they have and then they can hire them and then train them and to, and to do it the way they want them to do where they're going to be working. Yeah, and that's that's a great kind of uh, uh, point to talk about because you're right. You have to do the real thing of welding. This helps students get there a little quicker, have a better understanding. But it's just like that in the real world, too, is, hey, you, you know, you learn that you know, base level, that knowledge that's needed to get you in that door and get that career started or get that job, then you probably do need to still, you know, learn things to, um, you know, uh, learn up and, and and in welding to get specific uh, quality in, in different uh, types of welds there too. So kind of kind of comes hands in hands in that sense. You know, um, the last kind of thing that I'm, I'm looking at here is, you know, in your classroom, tell us just a little about the implementation. How many welders do you, or welding simulators do you have um, in your classroom? And do they, do you use them all the time? Is it, they use it to kind of the start welding, then you, you don't use them for a while until they need to come back to it. How do you kind of work your simulators in with your students? Okay, well, that's good. Because uh, now I, we use it year round, okay? And so we, we it's the, it's the first thing they do, like when they first get in the class this semester, I'll uh, kind of give them a brief introduction. And in and, and, and the school I'm at, it seems like the first two weeks are just people coming and going. You know, you got like, I start out with like 20 people in the class and you get 25 and it goes down to 18. So there's an influx and out, you know, coming in yep. and going out. And so that's one of the ways, instead of trying to focus on teaching lessons, I just say, okay, we're going to focus on each one of you is going to go in here and start using this simulator. Okay. So, so I'll, I'll first say, okay, you get two practices and then, then, you, and then you do the test. And so that's when the competition starts. So, I, and then I said each, once the classes get started and I know what my, you know, what my, what my uh, roster is going to be. And, and, you know, it's kind of locked in from that point on. And then we do like each, they, they, I can't remember how many different scenarios they have, but there's like a, maybe 20 uh, MIG scenarios and 20 TIG scenarios. There's probably more than that, but you know, we do it all year. So, so like hmm. when we're, when, when we're, if we're getting ready to stick weld, I'll try to take what we're going to stick weld, what kind of joint we're going to make, whether it be like a T joint, a lap joint, you know, or a, uh, or a butt joint. And then I'll say, okay, that's what we're getting ready to weld. You're going to start out and you're going to do the novice one and then the intermediate one and then the advanced one. And then once you do that, it kind of gives you like a, like a heads up of, you know, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not a hundred percent transferable to what you're going to learn in the back, but it, it gives you the basics, you know, which is the travel speed, the angles and stuff like that. And it kind of, but, uh, the, but we use it year round and we try to match, I try to match what kind of welds are doing in the back. With, with what we're going to do on the simulator. And I make them do three of those simulators a week. And then, you know, then those those three simulator weld joints that they do, it's kind of compatible to what we're going to do in the back. 
And then I also one good thing that I do I also have one of the, one of the well defect kits, so I can kind of say, mm -hmm. okay, your you 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 know you see how your well was on the simulator, and now you see what you're welding back here, and this is what's causing it. And when we go back into the simulator, I'm going to try to show you a little bit different thing to way to hold your your uh, stinger there or your or your mid gun to to uh, correct that, and then we'll come back in the classroom. So it, it just it gives me a, a way to where I can you know the the you know where you don't just sit there in in, in the welding in the uh, welding shop and just keep trying to get them to weld it over and weld it over and weld it over. You just say you know if they go go to the simulator and back to the weld shop to the simulator and back to the shop, it kind of kind of gives them a break from me and me a break from them if you know what I mean. You know, and then they can yeah. pick up a little bit on their own, and then we can kind of hone their skills. Hmm. You know, thank you, Mike. That gives us a you know a, a good picture of how you can use it throughout the year. Um, with different things. And you kind of lead us into um, our next section that we want to talk about. So I just want to stop and say thank you for taking the time with us today. Um, thank you for talking with us today. We're going to uh, go into other ways that it can be used, but um, you really did give us a good um, understanding of how you're using it and how it can be used within the classroom. So um, really appreciate your time with us today. Well, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank you so yeah. much. Hey, no problem. And and kind of off of what you just said, you know, one of the things that we want to always remind you is that um, the the training methodology that comes along with this. Not only do you get the products that uh, Mike was just talking about, he talked about our well defect kit and and how it's used with all the different uh, um, you know interactions of of understanding these different tools to help your education uh, for your students in welding. But we also, along with our GuideWeld VR product, um, which can show you as you do a weld, it shows you your um, speed, your travel angle, work angle, nozzle plate distance. It, it helps you to understand if you're going too fast, if you're stick, stick out distances uh, too far away or too close and, and get students to get that right technique when they are doing the welding inside of the virtual world. And then, as he talked about, there is a great assessment piece that every time you do a weld, it does a video recording of it, it gives you a, um, a score, and then it tracks your scores over time to see if you are improving, if you're gaining where you're at in that world. And so it's a great training tool for your students to get them understanding and to help them to get into the welding booth and do uh, quality welds faster. Now, kind of in that comprehensive training methodology, a lot of times we, we also focus on things like our common welding joints kit. This helps students understand what are the main concepts of, of learning the, the correct joints in, in, in welding. Then you do that virtual world. We also have our guide weld live system, which is actually doing the real thing while you're in the booth. You can weld with guidance in your helmet, allowing you to make sure you're doing your work angle, travel angle, and your distance, your speed correctly. Um, and then uh, your weld defect kit. What are the issues that you're having? And then how do I correct those issues? And then finally, seeing if you're doing a, a weld correctly or not, we have our, um, our uh, bend tester, allowing students to be able to learn how to do um, quality welds and being able to test that as well. Now, we're going to jump into the second part here, and this is kind of looking at another uh, way that you can use and encourage welding into your school, in bringing engagement in your school, and, and, and um, encouraging students to use it. So we're going to talk to a, a teacher from Hartnett County. <coughs> Excuse me, we're going to talk to Lindsay. Now, she did a video chat with us earlier, but it's going to kind of focus on a mobile lab for welding and construction and what she brought into the classroom um, to help uh, um, her students and, and her uh, uh, school, all the schools in her community here to help as a uh, welding need. So the first thing we ask is just kind of introduce, introduce yourself. What do you do with um, the Heartland uh, County Schools here? For my current position, which is School to Career Coordinator with Harnett County Schools CTE, which is a lot of words, um, but my main responsibilities now include post-secondary partnerships. So just helping to ensure we have seamless pathways from our high school CTE programs into our local colleges and community colleges where our students will go get higher ed. And I also work with business and industry partners. So a lot of what I do is I try to enhance the programs that already exist in Harnett County Schools to meet the needs of our workforce as well as post-secondary, but also pitch ideas and uh, you know try out new ideas and implement ideas uh, as 
seen and supported by our CTE director to expand opportunities for our students here. Recently, we've seen a huge boom in Harnett County schools with regards to construction trades and welding, also areas of agriculture and healthcare. And it just so happens that those are our top um, economic areas that have the highest, highest hiring needs. And so in order to align with that, um, we have spent much of our time over the last two to three years addressing the, lead, the needs of the local economy. So one of the things she talks about is how she started out in that agriculture world. She's now in a, a bigger role, but the whole purpose here is seeing career readiness. And part of the things that she sees in her area is just that the need for those welding students to, to gain the knowledge and get that understanding and get students into the program. So what they have done at, at Hartnett County is to create a mobile lab. And so we're going to kind of learn about that and, and how Guide World VR has helped well, in that way. Position. So the question that I, we posed to her is, is, how did you bring this welding simulation into your mobile app and what they saw it as best to do um, to bring that understanding, that knowledge, but also awareness into um, students understanding what type of careers and education they could go into. The support of our CT director, Dr. Aaron Fleming and South River Electric Membership Corporation, we were awarded uh, the capital credits refund in CTE. And my director knew exactly what he wanted to utilize it for, and it was to purchase a trailer and outfit it with state-of-the-art equipment to address the local hiring needs. We prioritized agriculture, which includes welding, construction trades, and healthcare. That addresses our top three industries that I've spoke about earlier. So we went with um, you know vendors that we already had a working relationship with that we knew specialized in products in agriculture and construction trades. So we reached out to Reality Works and we were given the opportunity to have a demo of a welding simulator done for us. We knew welding was high on our list of needs to have outreach in our community. Because if you're at a community event and you have children there, you also have parents. And some parents are looking to shift gears and you know change where they are in the workforce. And this gives a great opportunity to just teach the masses about trades um, and, and do that in a user-friendly and fun way where they're comfortable. So, you know, we were trained on the, the equipment through Reality Works. We had great support with that. I feel confident that our teachers, our director, myself, and some others on our team in career development, we could all go out. So if one of us is unavailable and easily show some, someone how to hop on the simulator and, and learn about MIG welding and stick welding and, and various other methods. And it's fun and engaging for students so in this world, they saw the need. They saw that, again, in that agriculture, construction trades, that this is something where their community um, was uh, is needing that for careers. And so they said, how can we do that? They worked with partners like RealityWorks that had already been working with them to say, what can we do to bring it? Guide World VR was one of those areas that we could say, hey, if you can create a mobile lab where you can bring it to the different schools, you can use it for your um, exploration days, you can use it for your county fairs and other ways to do that, that would be a way to help students to engage, to learn. And then when you're not using it in the mobile lab, you can bring it into the classroom, bring it into the school as it is portable and usable. And that's what we're going to ask her uh, kind of um, that usability so next. So there's two tables behind me. One table has the welding simulator. Obviously that's something that we're gonna talk about. Uh, it is not hooked up uh, to power. We don't have to have Wi-Fi to use it, which is what makes it awesome for something like this, is we can take it anywhere. We have a um, Milwaukee power source on our trailer, which is a battery operated generator. It's very quiet and it will, it will give us power we need for any period that we need to be somewhere because we just switch out the batteries. So if anyone is interested in using a welding simulator for something like this that's mobile, there's a way to do it and it's super easy and everything's lightweight, easily packable. So it's it's totally doable wherever they are. So again, that's that focus where what they're really focusing is that, again, our uh, uh, guide world VR system, it's easy to move, easy to interact with. It doesn't have to be Wi-Fi connected. So it can be, but it doesn't have to be. So you can move it from place to place. You can have it as a kind of an all-in-one system and, and usable um, with your uh, students. Now, the last thing we're going to kind of focus on is with that is the ability for her and her students to use it and being able to get it in the hands of students to let them really learn 
um, and grow from their welding experiences. We have students who are well trained on these simulators. There is no better public speaker or representative for what you do in CTE than a high school student who has mastered a skill set and can turn around and teach another child or adult how to do that. So one of our extra layers and goals we have for the year moving forward is to be able to allow students who are ready for a leadership role and really great at a trade they are learning to come with us to events and, and take a field trip with us to an elementary school and talk about how they were the student in fifth grade who didn't read so well, or they were the student in fifth grade who had a hard time sitting still in their desk. And then they got into career and technical education and they found something to do with their hands that they love and they've now found their way. And they can talk about the internship that they are in or the apprenticeship they're gonna sign into or the community college program that they're gonna go to for free because of dual enrollment opportunities. So, mm. you know, having, think small if you're going to do a trailer, but see the potential to grow this into something that is self-sustainable, that includes every human that engages with your programs. And high school students certainly are one of the most important ones. So again, a, a nice little focus there of, hey, start small, figure out what is good for you, but then you can big, get bigger and bigger. You can use it in many different ways. And again, when you get your students engaged, that's where all of a sudden they start taking the, the, the learning and the knowledge and turning it into power where understanding and being able to use it for, like she said, internships, ability to go out into the uh, and get um, different job opportunities, different areas. Once they learn those skills, then they can really kind of focus in and uh, be able to understand and get to different places in that sense. So again, some of the program focuses that we have really help improve classroom management. We focus on things like competition, engagement, confidence, and then we have lots of different resources uh, available for you as well. Now, I'm going to just check in one more time. Um, uh, Emily, I don't know if, if Tim's on the line or not. Yes, I might. Hey, Tim. Can you hear me? Yes, there we go. All oh, right. good. Sorry, <laughs> sorry about the technical, but uh, school's getting torn apart and we're <laughs> kind of putting pieces back together. All right, no problem. Well, let me ask you uh, uh, just a few questions in that in that sense with yep. the time we have left here is tell me just a little bit about your classroom, how you use it. We've heard from two other speakers. What do we do in, uh, in, in your world? How have you implemented it into your classroom? Okay, so in my program, we're we're a smaller school that is is building, and we've got industrial tech, ag, and and facts all into one program. So I use this uh, Reality Works in my introductory junior high classes to give them uh, a focus. I've got a number of students, as many of us know, that uh, they they think welding would be fun or or interesting, but they're scared of the sparks and the, uh, if you will, the the hazard side of things. Well, this Reality Works gives them that uh, open view. Here's what you can be doing. Here's the process without having those sparks flying around. And then I use it also on my introductory uh, welding class. We're because of our our limited elective base at the present time. I have freshmen through seniors in my welding class. So I've got some students who this is the very first time they've been in welding. And I have some students who may have been in the class uh, two or three times. Okay. So in that case, that it can go from many different areas, um, like you just said. And, and part of that, tell us a little bit about, you know, in your classroom, um, how has it helped the students? How, and I, I'm talking, you know, from classroom management for you to um, that knowledge and getting that understanding of what welding is to your students to then actually getting to go out and do the real welding. Well, it's worked, it's worked uh, tremendously on the confidence side of things, especially, you know, no disrespect, but a lot of the uh, girls and a, and a number of boys, they, they kind of look at the welding as, oh, that's going to be a dirty thing to do. There's sparks all over the place. I don't, you know, they, they, they have that hazard 
issue mindset until we take them through the reality works and they see how the form their their speed of travel the angle that they need to use like was previously said about the expenses for the for the welding class it's also helped me uh, actually reduce costs because students have a better idea of what they're supposed to do. My enrollment in my welding classes, now I have two sections of welding uh, that before I was almost barely getting one class filled. Now I've got, uh, I, I almost have to turn kids away from the present offering that we, we have in the program. For a time management aspect, it's great because um, when I have to leave for FFA activities, uh, the policy insurance wise is unless we have an approved CT instructor, my substitute teacher cannot let them weld except hmm. with this. Yeah. And so I can give some assignments to the kids and the, the substitute teacher. Plus, as previously said, we've got students who are showing other students how to travel, how to how fast to move your angle besides what I've done while I'm present in the class. So they can still continue to learn and do something instead of just push a pencil and paper because it's a substitute day in the classroom. Yeah, and, and that's a great piece of the puzzle too, is just that is the, the easy use, but also, yeah, there's a liability thing. So getting your students to be able to kind of feel like, hey, you need to understand this. You need to know this stuff before you go to the shop or in that case, yeah, when you're gone, you have something there for them to use and it is engagement. Can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, we've heard the competition side and you talked about the confidence side. Do your students get into that competitiveness when they're seeing scores and, and seeing how they did and what they did in that world? They, they do. I'm on a limited time for um, my classwork and project work and so it's more so on like the junior high and gotcha. you know you think juniors and seniors are competitive boy you haven't seen nothing till you turn a bunch of junior high kids loose against <laughs> each other of sorts and it's like you know everybody wants to one-up each other and, and then even even the non if you will non-typical uh students like was previously mentioned i've got a number of of uh iep uh, four, 504 students in my program yep. uh non-traditional students who are not from any kind of a mechanical or or a farming uh, background or in the class. And so once they tie in and they start showing an interest, then I even get a few parents wondering at conferences, okay, what are you doing in your class? Because little Susie has never really shown much interest in school, but you're doing something. What is it? You know, so then, then you tie them in and you even have it set up during conferences. And it's like, okay, here's what they're doing. And, and so even, even the parents are kind of, kind of buying in on, on some of the great uh, potential that we have with this, with this uh, simulator. Well, that just makes me smile and, and excited because, yeah, it's it's the opportunities there that some students don't even know they have until they get the chance. And so that student who tries it, you know, they thought it was dirty at one point. They try to say, hey, I have some skill in this area. Let's look into it more. You know, the world has changed in that world way. Um, and so to see that and, and see that grow. And then, you know, to what you said um, uh, kind of before, where it is something too where your, your classes have grown, where when you get that engagement, you get that interest, um, all of a sudden, like, you know, you said, do you have to turn kids away? That helps your program. That helps get the community seeing what you're doing. And then from a career and technical education world, it also gets the community seeing, wow, this is what we need because this is what's going to grow our job force. This is what's going to grow um, our labor force and, and get these students into those types of careers, which they're looking for. So you can also see that helping you, um, you know, to engage your community to then say, you know, what things can they do to help you? Like you said, the parents to say, wow, this is helping. And so, yeah, I think we have seen that more and more times where through these types of educational tools, it helps you in the classroom. It helps the students to get to that next step, which um, is, is success. And that's what we want them to be. So, Tim, excuse me. Thank you so much for um, taking oh, the time. Thank you for, you bet. The invite was well worth it. You know, yeah. it, it, the the opportunity to get this uh, reality works uh, uh, simulators in the first place came by way of a grant and a few twisted arms and a few other things on on 
on our side. And finally, when we got it in and the school administration saw what we were doing, they were they were a lot more supportive on trying some other um, activities, too, for the classes. So it was it was a, a, a win win in my books. Well, and thank you, Tim, for saying that, because that's one of those things, too, where, you know, it's one of those things where we really work hard and, and we hope as we partner with you teachers is that we want quality educational tools that helps the student and helps you, the teacher. And so if it is something where, yeah, it took a little while to get it in and to, to get people to rally around and say yes, but at the end of the day, you see that and they see that administration sees, wow, this is changing and helping students, um, then it's worth it. And the hard work's worth it. And, and the payoff is, is greater. So thank you so much for um, your time. And thank you for uh, all of our, our panelists today um, to talk to us and interact with us. And again, there may be more questions out there. If you have questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. But we wanted this to be an opportunity where, you know, peer versus to peer um, paneling panel of let us know what you see and how it's helping you. These are some of the stories that it's working through um, classes as we are into the, the school year and, and how it can help you um, increase your students ability to weld their knowledge on welding their ability and skill level on welding. We hope that you have seen that and that if you do have questions or there's ways that we can help you, you would reach out to Reality Works because we wanna help you um, create the best type of learning environment for your students. And we feel within the welding agriculture world, there's a lot of different resources that we can help with. So um, with that said, we thank you. Um, <clears throat> and you know, it's one of those things where with all of this, it is something where we're always there. You can talk to us from um, how to get these programs in your classroom. If you have these programs, we are always there to help set up, interact, teach, and train to make sure that it is working the best and most efficient in your classroom. So with that said, um, looks like we're, we're good on time and with our uh, questions. So if anybody has um, more questions, please reach out to us at our website, call us, we're happy to help. And thank you for your time today. Um, and uh, thank you for what you do as CTE educators.